Hello, this is Angie from Bird Control Australia. I have a yard sentinel with me today. I thought I'd make a little video because we have lots of questions from customers. Um, they either email us or they call us and um, they want to know how this operates, how it works and whether it's the best product for them. So I'm going to run through the most commonly asked questions um, and hopefully that that will answer your questions um, prior to you purchasing, just to put you at ease. So we have two models, uh, the Yard Sentinel base model and the Yard Sentinel RC. The only difference between the two models is that the Yard Sentinel RC has this strobe that comes and starts flashing at night or if it's in a dark area like a shed or under eaves, and it comes with a remote control. Otherwise, they're identical. Now, uh, the best setup for birds is to have it on, usually with a little bit of sonic volume also, if you're dealing with birds which are harder to move. Birds like minor birds, you need to have that optional sonic volume on. So at the moment, it's running in ultrasonic only mode. I can't hear it. Most people can't hear it. There is a small percentage of people that can hear it. But I'm going to turn this over now. You're going to see here, we have another dial. That dial is called the sonic volume dial. Can you hear that? I'm gonna turn it up. So you can have it as loud as you need to. Generally, for a deck or balcony, you'd only have it sitting at about 20 decibels. So loud enough to annoy the birds, but not loud enough to annoy you inside or certainly not loud enough to annoy your neighbors. Rotates between a predator bird and, and an alarm type sound. There's your predator bird sound. Okay, I'm gonna turn that down. And you wanna run it at least initially the first couple of weeks in constant mode. So you've got motion sensor and you've got constant and we have another mode called um, uh, continuous sweep. Continuous sweep is for if you have a variety of pests that you want to deter at the same time. Constant mode is the most effective mode because it means that it is always going. Um, it's running constantly and Imagine, if you could imagine a cone beam, it comes out at about 160 degrees, so not quite a half circle, and it will shoot forward between 10 and 15 meters. With the audible sound on, that sonic volume on, it will, it will travel further and you will get more coverage, about 300 square meters of coverage, as opposed to around 100 square meters of coverage. Uh, a, a very common question is, is it going to affect my pet? We do have a lot of customers that have pets and they find that it doesn't bother their pets. We think the reason for that is because it's a harmless device anyway. It works on making animals or birds uncomfortable and because they feel safe in their environment, they're not really bothered by it. Um, even though perhaps the first day they'll, they'll hear it and it, it would bother them, they very, very quickly get used to it. Whereas wild animals and wild birds associate the sound with it being an unsafe environment and that they should move on. Comes with a, a very comprehensive instruction manual. This is a great little book. It absolutely has so much information in it. But yeah, running on the constant mode, um, in the daytime with a bit of sonic volume on for birds is optimal for rodents um, bats and possums you can just run it in ultrasonic mode and you can put it on the nighttime setting so this clever clever little device knows when it's daytime or nighttime um, because it has a built-in photo cell you can run it on power comes with a 10 meter cord. You can also buy an additional 10 meter or 20 meter cord, which plugs into this cord. Um, or you can put four C size batteries in it. You can purchase rechargeable C size batteries as well. Um, 
Another question is, how long do the batteries last? Usually anywhere between 10 to 14 days, depending on how often you're running it, whether you're running it daytime um, or nighttime or 24 hours. I think we've just about run through all the FAQs. Uh, just a little tip to finish. We've got this lid, which can be really hard to put on initially. Um, best thing to do is if you're having problems putting it on initially, put in it in a bucket of very warm water and it makes it more malleable. And then you just put it on like you would a Tupperware container lid. And it's, it's fine to be out in the weather. That's, that's the last commonly asked question. You can use it inside or you can use it outside. I hope you find this video helpful. Thanks for watching.